Do you ever wish you could fly? Or maybe you want to date Cardi B? We all long to expand our capabilities. And that's why synth designers invented the mod envelope. Today, we're going to check out the modulation envelope. And by the end, you're going to have another tool at your disposal for auto magically warping your freaky sounds. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Michael Carrillo, AKA Hexpa. Welcome to my channel. I'd like to thank my subscribers and those of you who have clicked my links. If you want to make sure more content like this comes out, visit the description and on your way there, hit like and subscribe. So in short, the modulation envelope is another envelope. So you might ask, well, how is it different? And the answer is, it isn't. Some synths have their envelopes hardwired to specific functions. For example, in Centorial's primer, the amp envelope is specifically designed to work on the amplitude of the sound. The filter envelope is there and it only works with the cutoff frequency. But other synths like Native Instruments Massive have a bunch of envelopes, a bunch of LFOs that you can assign to virtually any parameter. For Centorial's synth, you have a dedicated envelope with just an attack and decay phase. And in the beginning, we'll be assigning that to the oscillator pitch. Next, I'll show you some examples using the mod envelope in isolation, and then we'll decode some simple patches using this feature before moving on to the more complex mystery group challenges. Let's get modding. So the mod envelope <clears throat> is a control signal. You set the destination. Here was the filter with the filter envelope set by the amount, and then the amp envelope, which was which is set to automatically be 100% affecting the volume of the oscillators. So with the mod envelope, right now we're going to set it to pitch, and in the attack, it's going to be as if there's an amount knob here. There isn't, but it's going to raise from your base pitch. In this case, it'll be C4 to whatever the amount is, and then it'll immediately drop like that. So it's almost like a sawtooth wave, up and immediately down. It's almost like it goes up an octave or something. We can play an octave down. Yeah, could be more than an octave. Um, and then for decay, he's saying it's gonna start from the amount and come down over this amount of time. Because the attack is zero, so it's immediately gonna start here and then decay down. Just like you'd see, you know, the amp uh, attack is an onset and then the decay is down, or it could be exponential curves, okay? I think these are probably linear curves, but we're gonna start immediately and come down. But it's always applied because this invisible knob is, is on you know, to maybe 100% might go to a, a ninth or a <clears throat> minor tenth. So let's do some challenges. That's an immediate attack, long release, or long decay. A little faster. He also mentioned that if you have a quick decay with an immediate attack, you get this punchy transient. Yeah! See, now we have a smooth onset and a smooth decay, so it can only mean that the attack and decay are up. Okay, pretty much the same thing, just a little quicker. Yeah! Okay, 
okay. A little bit more of a modern sound. Just an immediate whip down. next part. You can now see that we have an amount knob. The default is at 0 0.53 and that gives us the same effect as before. But if we were to raise it, then we get more of a whip. Maybe two octaves, who knows, three. Probably three or f octaves or so. Okay, does that make sense? And that's going to also happen with the attack. So at default, over the same amount of time, it's just going to interpolate to a you know between two large uh, a greater interval. Challenge time. Immediate attack, pitch set pretty high, relatively s quick decay. You hear how it ramped faster. It was almost like a steeper ramp. That's how you know the uh, mod envelope amount knob was set too high. Because it has a less distance to go, it doesn't have to move as quick to get there. Okay, pretty long, pretty high. That's definitely not it, right? That's not it, so it's gotta be that. Yeah! Okay, so that seemed to have like a little bit of an attack on it. Oh, 
I didn't even get to do it. Come on, I know what the answer is. Damn it. Oh, come on. Like, I didn't know that. Okay, what's the next lesson? Oh, is it the group? Uh-oh. So we're going to get into the groups, like always. Thanks for watching up until now. I'm just going to pause while I decode these patches, and I'll show you my answers and thought process at the end. One quick thing to note, you, as you probably know if you've picked up Centorial, that the decay is pretty much also a release. So if you were to play a longer um, release here, the decay will match. If it was just decay to zero, then as soon as you let go, um, well, you, you would have to have the sustain level and everything. So whatever this is, it's also decay and it's also release. Okay. Thanks for watching, and I will do some patches. So this patch, patch one, is pretty, I don't, you know, what is a super saw anyway? It's a multiple saw with detune, so this is a four voice, so you're gonna get eight oscillators. You're gonna get four oscillators at the fundamental pitch, and then you're gonna get four tuned up an octave. <laughs> Like he said, do the mod envelope first, so I did that. It's got a little bit of an attack time, a little bit longer decay, not turned up to default. But you'll notice that the sound is a little bit aggressive. You get that extra tick at the front, which is a indicator of unison, not to mention the spread. So I'm just getting monophonic uh, voicing here. And there's a little bit of reverb. So there's no decay. The filter was down just a little. Not hearing any re uh, resonance or amount. You come down low. And it's crunchy. I did try square waves, but it ends up sounding hollow. So let's get a hint. I think this is it. Yes. Yeah! Next patch. This patch is pretty cool. It's very video gamey. Yes, it's very video gamey. So, <clears throat> it's just a square wave, which you can tell by the sort of weighty, hollow sound. The resonance is up quite a bit. Envelope amount halfway. The filter cutoff is down, but it's got basically an instant attack. So basically the filter is going to jump up immediately. So it's all the way up here and it's just going to come down over this time. Same thing for the release. So the filter is coming down as the pitch of the oscillator is going up. And then it's jumping down pretty quick. So we're coming up and down and then there's a little bit of a release on the amp envelope. No polyphony. No portamento, just bare bones. Fun patch. And you play a little higher. Pretty modern sound. Well, what, what are they telling me here? Okay, I had it here. Okay, yeah, I guess it's coming down real quick. I had it here originally. I know that's not right. So let's listen to the release. Yeah, see how it goes closing the mouth too fast. Yeah, I guess a little bit at the end. I didn't notice. Yeah, it's just... So with this, 
when you release the key before the cutoff comes all the way down, it's just gonna move much more slowly. So instead of this, it closes within 375 milliseconds from the time I release the key. Whereas here, it'll take 10, but I mean 10 seconds, which means it's gonna move just a little bit and then the amp envelope is gonna cut off the sound because that's only half a second. So, you know, subtle detail, but that's what it's all about. I think we're good now? Yes. Yeah! Next one. This patch was pretty fun, a little bit ambient. It's just very touchy. You know, you hold that key down just a <clears throat> millisecond more and you get this filter suite. So it's a little bit tricky because because if you hold the key down, you'll notice it does, the filter does go down, but you don't hear it go down. You only hear it go up. But yet, listen. See, you, you, I guess you do hear it go down, but... So it's pretty close. I The delay kind of tripped me up. I thought it was reverb. Almost sounds like reverb. But no. So let's get a hint. That's the patch. Oh, did I miss something? I didn't see that. I didn't think the delay was um, spread out like that. But I guess it is. This patch is a little interesting. Let's take a quick listen to it. So you would think that because the LFO doesn't seem like it starts at the same time. See, you would think that the start button is off, but the start button is not off. See, makes a big difference. And then we actually have four voice unison with the sound not detuned and not spread. At least that's how I hear it. So it's a sawtooth LFO applied to the filter and yeah, a little bit of resonance with um, a second oscillator mixed in up a perfect fifth. And a little bit of reverb also with the smallest size, just a little bit of ambience. <clears throat> you can hear that if I increase the amount, um, it'll push the sound back. Here's the sound all the way forward. A little bit. See how that sound moves to the back? So people say reverb is good for creating like wideness. Not really. There's better things for that. Reverb is, it does make sound a little wider, but it's also going to push the sound back. So let's get a hint. Oh, is my volume not right? Oh, and unison is not right? Okay, so we're two-voice unison. Or unison is off? I guess that makes sense. If the detune is all the way off, the volume was turned up. I must have had that for some other reason. And I think we're good now.
two more patches okay on this one guys no joke i'm actually kind of just giving up like i don't know we're pretty close listen the only thing i can think is that he has this mix knob down here that sounds pretty close but i thought that he was never going to have that I thought always when he doubled and transposed oscillators, it would be 50 or 70%. This is only at 30. So I don't know, but... I really don't know. I've been trying with Unison and Detune and everything. And I just honestly, I don't think this is right, but this is as close as I can get with the triangle wave set to a medium amount. Um, eighth note rate to the cutoff with no resonance to I mean that's as close as I can get I don't know I'm sure it's wrong but let's get a hint that's right okay I thought it was wrong because I didn't think he ever had the mix knob like this but hey if it's right I'll take it yeah! final patch all right for the final patch Seem pretty simple, just a square wave with a slight detune, just one cent. You get the phasey sound. I think the filter's all the way up, just a short little pitch decay, and that's it. Short little release. I'm not hearing anything else. Let's get a hint. That's it. All right, let's do a quiz. Mod is short for modern. Just kidding, it's modulation. What is one way the mod envelope differs from the amp and filter envelopes? You can assign it to whatever you want, which means you can decide the modulation destination. What stages are included in the mod envelope? In this mod envelope, it's just attack and decay but in synths like massive you can assign any envelope to virtually anything so that would technically be a mod envelope but in this mod envelope it's just attack and decay which is also the release as we recalled from having a longer amp release this attack transient seems to be caused by the amp envelope That's got a pitch envelope, or mod envelope, assigned to pitch. And that's the filter envelope, because it gets darker. So that's all. Over to you, Mike. Modulation envelopes are one more option for automating and crafting your sounds. Whereas some synths have their modulators available for any assignment, some synths don't. So open up your favorite synth and see how yours works. If you need a fun, guided curriculum for learning synthesis, then you could do much worse than downloading the trial of Centorial. It's basically an app where you figure out synth patches by ear. Very fun. I used it. Thanks for watching. I'm Hexpa. Peace.